Welcome to the Side Hustle to Small Business podcast powered by Hiscox. I'm your host, Sanjay Parekh. Throughout my career, I've had side hustles, some of which have turned into real businesses. But first and foremost, I'm a serial technology entrepreneur. In the creator space, we hear plenty of advice on how to hustle harder and why you can sleep when you're dead. On this show, we ask new questions in hopes of getting new answers. Questions like, how can small businesses work smarter? How do you achieve balance between work and family? How can we redefine success in our businesses so that we don't burn out after year three? Every week, I sit down with business founders at various stages of their side hustle to small business journey. These entrepreneurs are pushing the envelope while keeping their values. Keep listening for conversation, context, and camaraderie. Heather Gibbons is a wife, mother, twin sister, friend, lover of the outdoors, and musician. She's also the founder of Inmo Creative, a full-service creative agency based in Atlanta. Before starting Inmo Creative in July 2022, Heather served as VP at another design agency, and before that, was the general manager of a popular restaurant in Decatur, Georgia. Here today to talk business boundaries and bringing meaning to work is Heather Gibbons. Heather, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. So uh, before we get into like all the nitty gritty stuff, I'd love for you to give us just like a minute about your background and touch on probably some of the things that I didn't touch when I did the intro. Definitely. So I moved to Atlanta in the late 90s. Um, actually, I, I came up, I worked. I was working for the Alliance Theater when I came here and I came to play music. That's what brought me here, the, the music scene. And I just resonated with the music scene here in Atlanta. And um, I wound up working at a place in Decatur called the Brickstore Pub. Um, and that was a, a great place for me. And um, I met a lot of really amazing people. And I just, my, my career just kind of happened from there. I wound up doing IT after I worked at the brick store. I played in a band for uh, about four years in Decatur. Then I did IT for a four and a half, five years. And then I, I left IT because I was thinking about opening a restaurant, um, went to Leon's in Decatur, opened that restaurant from the ground up. And I left that role uh, to join a small marketing uh, design agency in Atlanta. And then I left that role to start in Mo Creative and Intentional Momentum. I love it. I love it. So uh, your career kind of spans all over the place. Started creative, but then you did this side thing to IT stuff, which, I mean, I guess you could be creative in that. I mean, I'm a tech guy too, but um, people don't think of IT as really creative. And then food stuff, which I guess you could be really creative with potentially as yeah. long as diners are happy uh, with how you're doing that. So is is Inmo Creative the first time you've done something entrepreneurial um, or is there something entrepreneurial in your background before then? Well, it's not the first thing I've done. I think, um, gosh, I don't know the first thing. I think it would be the mango stand and then Ray. Oh, you got to tell me about <laughs> that. You can't, you can't tease a mango stand and not tell me about that. Well, I, when I was, when I was younger, it's, it's kind of, uh, when I was younger, I did sell some mangoes on the street, um, in, in my neighborhood. And my sister and I joke about it. Wasn't, uh, wasn't the most legit business, but in my, well, in Miami, um, mangoes are everywhere, like literally on the, that's, on the so, sidewalks. So that's, so that's what I was going to ask. You got to walk me through this. So geographically, you were in Miami, Florida. Yes, I grew up in Miami, Florida. And okay. um, and we lived, you know, in, 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 near a, a large number of mango trees. And um, we would collect them off the ground um, got it. and sell them on the side of the road. So um, not really our mangoes to sell, but mangoes nonetheless that we, you know, that we, that would have rotted into the ground, like, like the thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of mangoes in, uh, yeah. in South Florida. And, and we sold them on the street. I want to say it was three for a dollar. I just remember having a very large wad of cash in my pocket and being like <laughs> nine or something like that. And being so like impressed with the sheer just volume of the dollar bills, you know? I, I, so I wasn't going to touch upon the fact that you were in theory stealing yes. the mangoes from Essentially, other people's properties. Yes. That's but since truth. you said that, I, I, I'll, I'll talk about that. So, so you had a zero cost of goods sold exactly. because your inventory costed Excellent nothing. Excellent margins. 
excellent margins. <laughs> it was like a hundred percent margin uh, because you had no employees and no overhead. <laughs> yeah. uh, how did you, how did you sell these? Were you like on the street? On the street. People? Like- yes, on the street. So we would stand on the street and I guess we made up a sign that said mangoes like three for a dollar and people would stop and get mangoes, which is hilarious because like I just said three seconds ago, there's like mangoes rotting everywhere all over the place in Miami. But, you know, there's kids standing on the side of the road selling mangoes. I guess it's kind of like a lemonade stand. So did they, did they feel like these were like legitimate mangoes from a farm somewhere? Or were they like, are you guys just picking these up and selling them or what's happening? Yeah, here? great question. I that that it's I don't know the answer to that. It was <laughs> all I know is that my sister and I joke about like our first, you know, thing being like this like racket, you know, where... <laughs> we're, uh, it, we're, we're, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't legit. I, and now, you know, in retrospect, I can think back and say, wow, I shouldn't have done that. You know, um, I would, I would not model that for someone else. However, I, um, it sure was fun when I was like nine and I didn't think about, <laughs> I didn't put, I wasn't thinking about it like that, you know? I, and, and we're not even going to get into like where your parents were oh, yeah. when all of I this, mean, these hijinks the 80s, were happening. You know? It's, it's, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we'll just kind of move on from, from mm-hmm. that issue. Were, were there any other entrepreneurs in the family that you saw that you kind of got inspiration from? Well, so, yeah, I mean, the the, the childhood and, the, and all of that, those moving pieces, I'm not like we won't go into just because there's a lot of moving parts there. But um, my dad owned like a painting business at one point in life, I know. Um, my dad was just kind of like the guy that figured out how to do whatever it was and then did it himself. Like, okay, I'm going to go work for a, you know, an asphalt company and determine, you know, and then he'd start a business, that kind of thing. Um, he just learned skills and then would take, take them and run with them. Um, and so actually, as I say that out loud, (laughs) I guess I've done sort of the same thing. Um, and then when my went right around the time I was actually nine or so, my mom, um, my mom was working for a small marketing agency um, and she and the owner of the company wound up getting married and they had, so they had a, a marketing agency when I was a kid and um, they were, you know, they weren't doing creative work. They were doing promotions. They were doing, deals. It was kind of like the, I don't know if you remember the days, but it was like, you go to the grocery store, you spend a certain amount on a, on groceries. And then it, you, you had the ability to utilize something for an airline ticket. That was their, their deal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fascinating. Fascinating. Um, okay. So, uh, you took all these experiences and then, uh, you decided to start your own thing. Why did you try? Well, the thing that you're doing now in Mo Creative, like, why did you decide to step out and start doing this of all the things that you potentially could do? Well, that's a really great question. Um, I'll back up and say I have I've I also co-founded a nonprofit in Atlanta called Girls Rock Camp um, in the mid 2000s. Um, so that was a great experience. It was something I'm passionate about as a musician um, and empowering uh, kids through music and, you know, all of the different uh, classes that we had. And so there's that. And then I did also co-found two other businesses. I started a popsicle business, um, actually, uh, two months after King of Pops started, um, called Swainio Pops. And we were, we did it for about a year. Um, and we were in like Farm Burger and we sold at the uh, community farmers markets. Um, but I was also working a full-time, very busy job. And my partner um, and I were pregnant with our first child. So I I left that uh, business. And then a little bit later, I started another uh, business. It was kind of like a competitor to Kiwi Crate, if you're familiar, um, but a little bit more elevated. Um, so much so that our margins were terrible when you factor in postage. And it was not, <laughs> it, in order for the quality to be what we wanted, um, it was not, you know, a viable uh, business. So I wound up closing that. So some some good life lessons um, yeah. after my initial I, mango life lesson of don't sell things that don't belong to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Unless you're young enough and you can get away with yeah, it, right? um, maybe it's okay. Uh, I will note for listeners, um, we've actually had Stephen Kars of King of Pops on the podcast before, um, and kind of the arc of development that they've gone through with King of Pops is just fascinating, and it's totally, um, it's really inspiring. So, uh, but it's a hard business, it is, uh, and especially being pregnant and all those things. Like, man, yep. Um, yeah, I, I can't even imagine. It was fun, um, you know. At that time, it was. It, it's funny, you know, because we had different. Uh, you know, I've read about their story. I actually just read an article about him the other day in the business uh, journal and he um, and his brother, it's, it's inspiring. It's, I, I love it. Yeah. Um, but I went to Mexico to Tulum years ago on a yoga retreat. Um, and that was my introduction to Paletas, even though I, you'd think I would have been intro to them um, in South Florida, but that was really my intro <laughs> to them. And then I was also working at Leon's in Decatur, and we were doing a lot of really amazing things with flavor profiles. Um, flavor Bible, by the way, is a great book for anyone who's uh, mm. excited about flavor profiles and combining them. And so I, it was just, you know, I, I was really inspired by the ability to be creative with those. So that I think was super fun at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so let, let's move forward from there. So uh, Inmo Creative, what was the the spark that got you to the point of saying like, hey, let's let's do a new thing. Let's launch this. So that's a great question. I wish I had like a really good, um, like I had an epiphany kind of answer, but I, I did it. I actually, so I worked for a creative agency um, for seven uh-huh. years prior um, and we were doing great work, had great clients. Um, and, and I love marketing and I love the creative work we were doing. Um, but I just, I needed to move on. It was time for me to kind of move on and do my own thing because I did have this like entrepreneurial spirit. Um, but I think I, I was always afraid of, of leaving one and like, you know, um, and two, I just, I wasn't sure. I, I've had a hard time thinking like, okay, what, where do I put my energy? Like when I left, I actually left my agency. I didn't have a plan. Like I had no plan and I had people, I I had a lot of people reach out, which was super cool and say like, Hey, if you want something, you know, come talk to me, people like marketing folks and actually, you know, and some people that I had already been working with, um, which was really, really great. I, but I told everybody the same thing, including the owners, I'm going to take a breath and I'm going to determine what's next after I have like a moment to take a breath. And I really meant that. Um, but then I, my last day was June 3rd. And on Monday morning, one of my good friends messaged me and I have like this, this tight group of friends, we call each other family. And he's part of that group. And um, he was, and we've worked together before, like we've collaborated. I have brought him in. He's a creative director. I have brought him in on projects in the past, but I don't, so I don't know why I didn't connect the dots. Cause that's like one of my favorite things in life to do. But Um, he said, do you want to collaborate, you know, on a proposal for an RFP? And I was like, sure. And by the end of the week we had, it, it was kind of in motion and we, you know, by the end of the week, we had a name, a website, a logo. I mean, it, it it kind of happened quickly. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm meant to go in this direction. Um, and it, so that that was the start of Inmo Creative. That was like the then? start of like, Inmo Creative. And I'll say, I'll back wow. up a, a hair and say that Inmo Creative is part of Intentional Momentum. And Intentional Momentum is a benefit corporation, which is a newer legal entity in Georgia. Um, and I think it's a legal entity in, I want to say 13 states. I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, and so we we when we registered, we registered as a benefit corp with intention intentional momentum. And there's a story to that too, but it's too long. Um, and we, we, um, our, our purpose, our goal is, um, is beyond the creative agency. Um, but the creative agency in my mind is kind of like our, our heart. (laughs) Um, and it's, you know, and we got started there. It's like, makes complete sense for us to start there. Um, but the goal for intentional momentum is bigger. And I think that's what is, is helpful for me as someone who's like, okay, where do I put my energy? Cause my previous boss was like, what are you going to do? And I was like, I don't know. I could start a restaurant. 
I could start an IT company. <laughs> I'm like, um, I don't know. I'm going to take a moment. Um, and I say but, that. But, but the moment ended up being less than 24 hours. It was, yeah, it was real quick. <laughs> um, and I like, honestly, like I had lunch with somebody on Friday and she, we, she inspired me to buy this Donald Miller book. And I did, and I haven't even read it. I, 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 I want to <laughs> so bad, um, but I will. I'm going to to read it. But I didn't. I. It's just been. I've been in go mode ever since. And you know, we got we got a, a client. We got our first client that was like an official new client. My uh, partner Simon had already been working with a couple of brands. We brought them into the fold, and we gained a couple more clients along the way. So, you know, we're growing. It's it's and it's happening in a way that feels really good and we're working with brands that align with our values and that's the big thing mm -hmm. is is value alignment for me yeah. and for us and for what we're doing and what I want to do and what I want to bring, you know, to business. I know there are a lot of good businesses out there operating with purpose and um and we and we want to do the same. That's our our yeah. primary objective. So um, let's, uh, on that note, kind of switch gears uh, and talk about purpose, um, but also talk about balance. How do you balance kind of the stress? <laughs> you got, you were like, let, let me have a moment. And it was less than 24 hours. Uh, so you didn't really get a moment. So how do you balance the stress and demands of running uh, an agency and family life and friends and all of the other things that there are that you do? Well, it's been a challenge um, and I've had to, what I realized is I thought, you know, for years, I think I thought that I, it wasn't me. It was just, I was in an environment that required me to work all the time. And, but it's kind of like the same logic of no matter where you go, there you are, um, which is now it's just me, but I'm sitting on the beach with a laptop on my lap. So whose choice is that? Um and so I have to find, it's been, it's been a challenge for me to say, okay, you've done enough for today, put it down, take a breather and, you know, wake up fresh tomorrow. And so I've, I've done things, um, also throughout the day, I try to implement the Pomodoro technique. Um, so I'm not great at it. I, like I'm working on, I'm working on going for walks. Uh, because being outside in the fresh air in, in, in the world, in nature, smelling the, you know, when it's not soggy, like it is in Atlanta right now, um, <laughs> you know, smelling all of the beautiful fresh blooms and, um, it's just, you know, it, it makes me feel better and it kind of helps me, uh, relax. And then the Pomodoro technique is the 25, five, right? So 25 minutes of work, five minutes of brain rest. And I will, go pick up my guitar for five minutes and strum my guitar and play. And maybe I'll, you know, maybe I want to work on something musically, or maybe I just want to do nothing musically, but play, you know? Um, but it makes me get up and walk away. And I find that when I do that, when I come back, it's like the ideas are better, clearer. I'm not in kind of a, a muck, you know? Um, yeah. it, it, it does help. Yeah. When you think about your day, um, is there like a, a schedule that you do? Like, do you always exercise or is it always play music? Is there like something that is an anchor in your day that you always make sure you do? I want to say that I do, but no, I am. Um, I'm working. I need to. I'm working on finding that balance of saying, OK, I need to schedule a walk at this time. Um, I have a lot of moving parts. I have a, a 12 year old. Um, so, and he is, you know, doing baseball and rock climbing and, um, drums and, you know, and also does a, a couple of different programs for school that are, he's not in traditional school. He's kind of in an alternative, uh, homeschool type environment, except it's not at home. It's, it's outside of the home. <laughs> so all that plus work, somebody else's, somebody else's home. Yes. Uh, well, and, and my partner's a midwife, so I've got the on-call <laughs> midwife and, you know, so there's a lot of moving parts and I just, yeah. you know, some, I wake up really early and I get going early. Um, and I do enjoy that time because it's kind of my productive get in the zone time. Um, yeah. and I try to I have a document that I try to refer to that's, you know, 
a little bit of a reminder. It's, it's, it's kind of like my, my list of reminders, um, and then values. And I don't look at it every day, but I, I like it's, it's titled every day. I want to look at it every day. And then I try to write and with the idea that they're being kind of like, not, I've not done the artist way, but I'm familiar with it. And I know that I, you know, write three pages, no matter what, even if you're writing, mm -hmm. I don't know what to write. Um, just to kind of get my brain awake going and the creative energy flowing. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, okay. So as you've, uh, kind of moved in and in Mo creative and, uh, all of this that you've started is, is now just a few months old at this point, right? Um, it's, it's not even a year yet. Um, is there some systems or tools or applications that you and Simon have implemented that help you manage the business better? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we've, we've actually just recently from a project management standpoint, gone back to Monday, which I do, I do really love. I think it's, it's amazing um, in a lot of ways, but I love the calculations within your, your actual uh, projects is that those are pretty cool. Um, another, I love tools, by the way. So I have like a whole, you know, I have a tab dedicated and then, and there's a million of them. Um, one of the, one of my faves that I recommend um, to people is Untools. And I want to say it's untools.co. Um, but it's a great resource for tools that are around thinking, right? And um, so I think, I would say that's one of my favorites. And then let me think, tools. I love, I love so many things. It's hard to narrow that down. Um, is, is there one tool that you use every day that you would be lost without? I mean, we, I would not know what to do without Google drive. Of course. I mean, we wouldn't be able to function. We've got everything there and then yeah. integrated into our project management software. Um, I would say the, the you know, our, our combo of, of Google Drive. And then I think what, you know, if, if we're going to talk about, so there's tools and then there's systems and processes, right? So um, I think what, what, we're, what we've been doing and focusing on in these, you know, beginning months as a new agency, but new agency with like, it's funny, we were talking about music earlier. It's kind of like I'm teaching, my, I play guitar, right? So it's like, I can play guitar right-handed but if I needed to teach myself to play guitar left-handed, my mind knows how to do it. I just have to train my other hand, right? So I feel like there's yeah. a sense, a little bit of that that's happening. Um, and here we are beginning um, a brand new agency. We have uh, the ability to create our systems, processes, and create a really strong foundation from the ground up. And that's what we've been really focused on is doing that work that can get backburnered really quickly and it's already happening to us and we're brand new but we're really bringing it back to the front because I don't want to be years in and saying I wish we would have done that from the beginning um because you know I I, I got a tidbit from an article recently which is a no brainer right but it's always the simple things and it's if you don't build a solid foundation if you you know if you attempt to scale on top of a solid foundation or on a weak foundation, it's going to crumble, right? Um, you can't scale yeah. on a weak foundation. So we're, we're, our goal is to build a strong foundation of systems processes and how we operate beliefs, values, mission. Um, yeah. So that's what we've been working on. Yeah. Well, what's interesting of your answer is, you know, if you think back 30 years, um, Google Drive and, and Dropbox and all of these things did not exist, they, even less than 30 years. Like, totally. Think about agencies back then and how did they get things done and function and, and all of those things. Oh, um, amazing. I know paper, right? Yeah. They were using paper. <laughs> um, right. And then, and then I know from IT days, you know, it's a shared, it's a shared drive in a, on, on a, on a machine that's sitting in a server closet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know? That, that, Hopefully somebody is thinking about backing exactly, up. Exactly, uh, exactly. Because if they don't and disaster <laughs> happens and disaster always happens. Yes. Uh, what, what happens then? Yeah. I, I've gotten these questions before. Like uh, somebody had asked me, it was one of our kids, somebody had asked, like, what did you guys used to do back in the day to book airline tickets? 
uh, before the internet. I'm like, well, a travel agent, or you would call the airline. But, like, it's so easy to forget yes. like how things used to be totally. and how hard they were. Like, if you had to schedule a trip, uh, like, how would you arrange all the meetings? Uh, right? Like, now it's easy. Yes. It, but we're so used to it. Exactly. Now. I mean, even back when I was booking my band, it was hard. You know, it was right. just a different time. Um, we had the internet, I, I attempted, but people weren't, it, it wasn't what it is today. Um, right. yeah, hundred percent. But I do think really quick, be, only because I think I remember it. 1-800, is it 555-1212? Was that the Delta number? Uh, um, maybe, or, I don't know. I that so. sounds like some number that we should know. Or something it, it probably doesn't exist anymore right i mean <laughs> whatever wh whatever that number is yes so um okay so uh now with all of the tools and everything that everybody has at their disposal what would you tell somebody that's thinking about taking that leap um and doing a side hustle and i know you you've not done side hustle you've done kind of full-on things um uh, but you know people that have done side hustle so uh or taking their side hustle and making it a full-time business what, what advice would you give somebody like that? Well, I think because I've learned the hard way in my, you know, kind of earlier uh, attempts uh, at startups, I would say just, you know, get, develop your MVP, right? And, sh and then put it in place and then make sure it's right, you know, and make sure that you've got good margins and make sure that you're making a profit. Um, it, you know, I mean, because... I, I think, you know, in my early days, I, we were, we were dreamers. Like we had this beautiful concept around this whole, you know, box Kiwi K crate competitor, for instance, but it just wasn't practical when it came down to it. So, um, you know, our vi we spent a lot of time on the vision mission and all those things. And that's huge. That is important, but you got to make sure that your product is also something that you can sell and make a profit. Right. Um, so I, I think that's one thing. Another, another thing is, um, and I mentioned this to you earlier, a great piece of advice given to me, um, years ago was, and this is again, super simple. It's always the simple stuff. Um, it's usually a checkbox, right? Um, it's get, instead of, uh, having ideas, you know, swirling around in your head and then you're busy, you think you're busy because you've got all these ideas swirling around in your head write it down, like make a list, keep what's important and what's relevant and what's good and get rid of the rest and move on, move forward. Um, I think that's, you know, the, these are tidbits of advice that have helped me. Um, they helped me move forward. And because I was definitely doing the, the swirly, I think I'm busy thing. Um, and the, that piece of advice was, was helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, okay. Uh, this has been great, but if our listeners want to find and connect with you, where can they find you? They can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, they can also find me on, you know, Facebook, Instagram, um, our website, InmoCreative.com. And I would love to, to connect. Awesome. Awesome. Heather, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Side Hustle to Small Business podcast, powered by Hiscox. To learn more about how Hiscox can help protect your small business through intelligent insurance solutions, visit hiscox.com. That's H-I-S-C-O-X dot com. And if you have a story you want to hear on this podcast, please visit hiscox.com slash share your story. I'm your host, Sanjay Park. You can find me on Twitter at, at Sanjay, that's S-A-N-J-A-Y, or on my website at sanjayparek.com.